In this video, we're going to look at units, grid, snaps, and the transform tools inside 3D Studio Max. When you first open up 3D Studio, you may want to confirm what your unit of measure will be. If I go to the Customize, pull down to where it says Unit Setup, we'll get a dialog that shows that we can choose between Metric, US Standard, which comes in a variety of flavors, Custom, and Generic Units. Custom units might be used to set up some sort of a grid module that you would like to snap things onto, a structural grid for example. I'm going to leave mine at generic units and click OK. Next, the grid that's um, inside here is a function of whatever the units are. And if we choose, we can reorganize this grid to suit our needs. Just go to the snap tools up here at the top, any of them. If we select and right click, we'll get a gridded snap settings dialog. If you find inside here home grid, you'll notice that our grid spacing is 10 units and there are major lines every 10th unit and the perspective grid is limited to 7 modules. So you can change any of these values at this location. If we move over to where it says snaps, you'll notice that there's a variety of snaps that can be selected. Uh, I'm going to leave ours right now simply to grid points, vertex, and that's it but you'll notice all of the other snaps have these icons. If we should happen to roll over one of these topological features, you would see that the cursor lights up and looks like these icons. Okay, so grid points will be a box, vertex will be a crosshatch. Okay, so now that I have a snap set up and my snap turned on, I'm gonna to go to the move tool and you'll notice that a transform gizmo is turned on on this object. It's basically a handle that shows us the X, Y, and Z from the origin point of this geometry. And if we should happen to, uh, let's turn the snap off temporarily, if we should happen to grab onto this transform gizmo on any one of its features, for example right here I'm dragging this in the X axis, um, it's being constrained by the gizmo. So here it's being constrained in the Y, or here it would be constrained in the Z. And you'll also notice that there are three planes that are lit up um, as we move the cursor around. Right now the Z, X plane is illuminated, and if I should happen to click and drag on that, the object will be sliding around on the Z, X plane, um, likewise on any of the other two planes. So. Uh, keep in mind that Transform Gizmo is an excellent way to uh, handle simple orthographic translation uh, and rotation and scale as we'll see here in just a minute. I'm going to turn my snap back on and I'm going to move this geometry now from its corner. We have an object snap set up to go to vertex and I'll deposit this on the origin point here. So I went from the vertex of the geometry to the grid point um, at the origin. So this is snaps inside 3D Studio. Now while we have this turned on, let's also take a look at uh, rotate and scale. I'm going to go ahead and select the rotate tool. So if I happen to grab the object, I'll see a transform gizmo that goes with rotation and I see the lines here that represent the uh, red, green, blue, X, Y, Z um, axes and if I select one of those it'll be rotating in this case about the x-axis or rotating about the y-axis or rotating about the z-axis of this particular geometry. Likewise the same is true if we, we go to scale and if right now I'm selecting scale uniform you'll notice that uh, I have the transform gizmo here uh, now even though I'm in uniform I can use the gizmo to independently scale this in different directions. So right now I'm scaling this just in the Z direction or here I'm scaling this uh, just in the X direction and so forth. Um, if we select the plane in the middle here it's going to be a uniform scale. Now I should also note, um, and we haven't used this yet either for rotation um, or for translation, that we have the transform type in box down here below and currently it's set to absolute coordinates. So if we had that turned to relative uh, we could move this relative to where it is um, or rotate it uh, or in this case scale and right now since it's on uniform scale you'll see there is only one field that's black uh, so we can type in here if we were to scale this by a factor of 20% um, then you would see it be a uniform scale. If we go back to the 
scale uh, tools, you see that uh, there's a couple of other options. I'm going to use non-uniform here just for uh, the sake of making the point. And now, of course, we could have different values in each. So maybe 80% in the Y and 50% uh, in the X direction and so forth. So it's important to tie the use of the transform tools with snapping and occasionally using the transform type in if you want to have uh, an accurate translation of this from one location to another or rotation. Um, and uh, of course, when you're using the snap tools, uh, be certain to use the snaps that are appropriate for the uh, task at hand. Don't turn everything on, it's a, it's a mess. So turn these on and off um, as needed. And uh, if you're going to be rotating, um, an analogous snap for rotation is the angle snap. If that happens to be turned on, you'll see inside here that we can set the angle snap. Right now it's set to 5 degrees. So if this is uh, set to 5 degrees and we should choose to rotate, then uh, you'll notice that this is moving in a nice even 5 increment, uh, five degree increment uh, rotation. And that's uh, going to be very critical uh, as opposed to say rotating without that constraint um, you can't just eyeball this you won't have the accuracy okay